on this, Jennifer, when we're hearing this full list and actually when you hear all the restrictions that are in place, many of them in place for the last two years being listed out as potentially being lifted tomorrow or in the coming days, it's quite the turn from government, isn't it? It's quite the turn from our public health officials who've maintained such a cautious approach for so long. And when you hear it like that, it, it's nearly quite exciting, you know, to, to imagine a future without all of that. And look, I'm mindful that there has to be a decision by government tomorrow. We're, like, we're hearing very good, positive news tonight, but there has to be a decision by government tomorrow in relation to timing and the implementation of what sounds like really good news, a step back to normal. We have to remember as well, in, in all of our excitement and, our, and, our, and, and delight about moving back to normal, all of those people who, who didn't make it through this period and the families who have, who have lost people throughout that period, thinking as well about business who have suffered quite a lot there will be businesses who are reopening um, and reopening fully and, and I wish them all you know so well but there are those who have really really struggled through this period but look it does sound like very good at not, uh, uh, good good news this evening that's a really positive thing I mean that's on foot of the vaccination program that people have stepped up to and, and participated in it's because of the way that we've been able to handle this because of how people have handled it um, clearly the Omicron thing, variant has changed things because of the scale of transmissibility the scale of infection and not being that you know dangerous in comparison to the other variants, it really does sound like good news, and um, I, I you know we'll see now how government chooses to implement it over time. Good news, Paul. Are you are you as excited as Jennifer about what you're hearing tonight? Well, look like everybody, um, I would like as much of a return to normal as is possible, of course. Um, for me, the, the question really is, how do we avoid this being reversed in the future? Because COVID isn't going to go away tomorrow because of whatever decision that the government makes. We're going to continue to have this quite serious disease, which is airborne. Um, and there's two key things in that for me. One is domestic, which is the question of ventilation and also the question of masks. Mm. The right of workers to have clean air. And I think we need to hear action from the government saying that we're going to make workplaces and public spaces as safe as is possible. We're going to have, as our bill, which was passed through second stage at the start of December, did set minimum standards for CO2 levels in air in all workplaces uh, or ensure that we can have filtration. Like, you, you know, in schools at the moment. Yeah, for example, in our yeah. schools, if they're removing all those restrictions that are in place, that presumably would include um, the CO2 monitoring to a point, that, that, that there, will be, there may be a push I, to close those windows a bit. I would certainly hope that that is not the route that they go down. I thought there was a hint in what Leo Varadkar said today in Leaders' Questions pointing in that direction, but that would be very worrying because there is an alternative to teachers attempting to teach and students attempting to learn in temperatures of seven, eight, nine degrees, and that is to install the HEPA filters okay. that we've been calling for for over a year that the government says they're going to do, but they've been dragging their feet, which means that many principals are telling us they won't be in place until the summertime. Um, would you and be in favour also of keeping masks in place? It, We're it hearing seems, about it masks seems to me wearing it, it wouldn't, being removed it, it, at the exactly. end of February. It doesn't make sense to get rid of uh, wearing masks. This is still going to be an airborne uh, virus. It makes sense for people to continue to wear masks. The other point I just make quickly is internationally, we need to try to avoid, and we can't guarantee it, but try to avoid new variants, new potentially worse variants than Omicron. The best the best thing we can do to do that is have a, a waiver of, the tr of, of trips, which, as in get rid of the intellectual property that the pharmaceutical companies are sitting on, preventing 40% of the world's population getting access to the vaccines. Okay. Um, Jennifer, just on that point, and you know, Paul has, has pointed to people who may be in vulnerable um, situations, who may be wary to a point about these changes, given you know, the, the culture that's almost in place of you know, lockdowns, restrictions, all for the public health good, to now see a full removal of them, um, that people may be wary and worried about this new approach. What would you say to them? Well, I think you know, we've, we've adopted a reasonably a cautious approach insofar as possible based on the data and the evidence that we have. I think Paul is right to identify that a new variant could come along and we'll have to, if that ever happens, react appropriately at that stage too. But there's no question but that people have been socialised differently. We've all behaved differently and it's going to take something to unwind that psychologically and emotionally as much as anything else. So we really need to be careful about when that. when the bars and clubs and everything reopens as of tomorrow night or next week, every, you know. 
Well, people I think will some be, people be yeah, running out think, to them but, and enjoying but people them. People are different. Some people will, yeah, and other people will take a more cautious approach, and other people will want to, and they'll, you know, f f find their way. People are all different, Claire, of so course. The, but I think the point is, one of the it, things, it's up to us to, to kind of find our own, yeah, our but, own but path through this. Yeah, but I think one of the things, now, though, that a lot of things have changed in COVID. I mean, we have opened up our outdoor dining. We have opened up a whole new world for ourselves, a different way of living over that two years of necessity. But there are a lot of things that can be taken from the COVID experience, improvements that have been made to all of our lives, like that, like the HEPA. Felt, like, you know, these opportunities that I don't think should be lost. Yeah. These are improvements and generally that, that, that we can maintain. to the strategy that we're hearing about that, that Micheál Martin said he's going to kind of out, outline a, a medium term strategy. Is that regarding restrictions or is it going to sort of look ahead to how we plan? Because one of the criticisms of government, John, has been that we've been very reactive um, rather than proactive when it comes to this pandemic. What he did commit to today, this morning uh, on radio, was a, an inquiry into how we have conducted ourselves. So there have been mistakes made, uh, he, he conceded, and that inquiry, we would hope, would advise us to the medium to long term. Uh, we don't know what the medium term planning is beyond that. As of very soon, most restrictions will be gone. And um, I think we will enjoy the elation of that. Um, uh, they go on and on as, you know, the, the work from home advisory is also to be lifted, um, which will be a huge benefit to the city centre. I drove down to Dublin Quays today and I was a bit shocked. I hadn't been down there in a while that they have, they have um, gone backwards in quality a, a lot. A lot of the buildings I see are, 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 are falling down in some parts of it. So th there's a huge boost needed for city centres. Um, also, I was surprised to see that um, there will be a lifting of all restrictions on medical fi facilities and visiting, including nursing homes, which will be... That would be uh, hospital an, visits, nursing homes and presumably maternity hospitals yeah. and, and, and all of those areas, which uh, on there's, everything. there's long been calls for, yeah, for yeah, an so easing of restrictions. Yes as and from a time that the government decides. Like, is this going to be a challenging one for government, do you think, Jennifer, in, in making that decision, in making that call on when these things happen? For example, in our hospital, there are plenty of people, um, frontline workers, who say, you know, if you can open up the hospitals to all visitors and everything, we, they already have a problem with containing COVID because there still are high numbers of people with, with COVID in our hospitals, whether they're symptomatic or not. These are exactly that, the balances. That, that these are the issues that are going to be coming to the fore now. Yes, these are the ex exactly the balances that government is going to have to consider tomorrow and work out the best combination and the best timing for the unwinding of restrictions, keeping vulnerable people at the centre of that, as has been the approach all the way through. So it is going to be a, a challenge tomorrow to get this right, to get the timing right, to be able to do it in a, in a, in a, in an a reasonable way as we unwind to be able to create caution and space for the future. John is right about the inquiry and I was on the original COVID committee in the early days and we talked about that even at that stage because it was clear that we were doing this live, that everybody, healthcare, government, society generally, we were doing it live. There was so much that we all did well. There's no question but that there's things that we didn't do well and that we have to learn from.